Hi, today in CompTIA Security Plus Guide to Network Security Fundamentals, our module is module number 12, where we are talking about vulnerability management. Now, vulnerability management plays an important role. It's a systematic approach to managing security risks posed by vulnerabilities in a computing environment. It involves the continuous process of identifying, classifying, remediating, and mitigating the vulnerabilities in software, hardware, and networks. So our job is to make sure that there are no vulnerabilities in our softwares, hardware, or network systems which could be exploited by any adversary. Now its importance is essential for maintaining the organization's security posture by preventing attacks that exploit the vulnerabilities there by protecting the data, maintaining the service, and continuity. So our main focus is business continuity process so that if any attack happens with your organization, you'll have to make sure that your system should be up and running. A large healthcare provider implements a vulnerability management program that regularly scans medical devices and systems to identify patch vulnerabilities before they can be exploited by a cyber attacker. So they want to make sure that whatever they are doing is according to the um, standards and making sure that uh, all the devices and everything is patched um, and they want to avoid any sort of exploitation from any adversary. So the goals of vulnerability management are identifying the vulnerabilities, classifying vulnerabilities, and then remediating vulnerabilities, and finally, mitigating the vulnerabilities. So the definition of identifying the vulnerabilities could be a process of discovering the vulnerabilities in a system, software, or a network through various means, including the software tools and manual testing. So this involves using automated tools, scans for known vulnerabilities and manually testing to uncover new vulnerabilities that automated tools might miss. Identification is a crucial system or a crucial process because it sets the foundation of all the subsequent actions in the vulnerability management process. So example could be like using the Nessus scan to, uh, for the outdated software versions or misconfiguration that could allow unauthorized access. Now we covered about misconfigurations earlier, so if you want to check that, you can check the series of lectures that we are posting about this, um, this training program. Then we have the classifying uh, vulnerabilities. And classifying vulnerabilities organizations um, uh, usually identify the vulnerabilities based on the severity, impact, um, and the complexity of the exploitation. So once the vulnerabilities are identified, they need to be classified according to their severity, uh, potential impact, and the complexity of the exploitation. Classification helps in prioritizing the vulnerabilities, ensuring that those posing the greatest risk are addressed first. This step is vital for efficient resource allocation and effective risk management. Example could be assigning a high priority vulnerability that allows remote code execution while lower priority might be given to the lesser issues like minor information leaks, etc. Then we have remediating vulnerabilities, taking action to repair or to mitigate the identified vulnerabilities typically by applying the patches, configuring settings, or changing the code, etc. So um, remediating um, uh, the vulnerabilities involves correcting the vulnerabilities that have been identified either by removing them or removing the associated risk. This could involve applying patches, configuring system settings, upgrading systems, or even removing the vulnerable applications. Now, remediation is a direct action aimed um, at eliminating the vulnerability from the systems to enhance the security of it. Um, for example, patching the SQL injection flaw in a web application by updating the web application or a code testing is a patch, um, with a patch before the deployment. Now, mitigating vulnerabilities means that implementing uh, measures to reduce the damage potential or the vulnerability that cannot be immediately remediated. So the mitigation in this ca case means that the efforts that may include applying um, compensatory controls such as firewalls, intrusion detection systems, or more restrictive access controls to reduce the likelihood of impact of any exploits. Example could be setting up a web application firewall, which we call as WAF as well, to temporarily prevent the exploitation while the, action, uh, while the actual patch is being tested and deployed. Now there are different kind of vulnerability scanning. There is network uh, scan, endpoint scan, wireless scanning, database scanning, and application scanning. So if we'll uh, explain the network scan, it means that it involves uh, scanning the network devices such as routers, switches, and firewalls to identify the vulnerabilities that could be exploited. 
So we can say that network scanning focuses on identifying the vulnerable systems within the network. Scanners check the open ports, active IP addresses, and services running on servers and other devices. This type of scan helps administrators understand the security posture of their network and pinpoint the weaknesses like unprotected network devices or services or open ports that could uh, serve as an entry point for the attacker. An example could be an IT team uses uh, tools like solar winds, network performance monitors to scan the misconfigurations and outdated firmware in the network devices. Then we have endpoint sp scanning. Now in endpoint scanning, it focuses on the individual devices such as uh, workstations, laptops, or mobile devices connected to the network looking for uh, vulnerability flaws like outdated software or improper configurations etc nine part scanning targets individual devices as mentioned like workstations laptop or mobile devices this scan assesses the security state of each device checking for vulnerabilities like outdated softwares missing patches misconfigurations etc effective endpoint scanning ensures that all devices comply with the organization security standards before they could connect to the network an example could be Microsoft Defender or Endpoint to automatically scan workstations for vulnerabilities and recommend the security updates. Wireless scanning means they target the wireless network infrastructure for um, detecting the security weaknesses like unprotected access points and weak encryption methods, etc. So um, this includes identifying unauthorized access points, uh, weak encryption methods, and use of default passwords. Given the um, unique nature of the wireless connectivity, this scan is essential for securing the wireless network transmission and preventing it from unauthorized access. Um, for example, utilizing air crack um, to test the strength of the Wi-Fi encryption and identifying the unauthorized access points within the corporate network. Then we have database scanning, scans the database for main configurations, known vulnerabilities and permissions uh, um, or issues related to that that could lead to unauthorized data access or loss. So um, scanners look for issues like SQL injection vulnerabilities, unprotected database ports and weak authentications. Now securing database is critical as they often hold sensitive and valuable information, making them a prime target for cyber attacks. Now, example could be implementing IBM Guardian. Uh, it's a continuous scan uh, databases for vulnerabilities like SQL injection, possibilities of excessive user permissions, etc. Then we have application scanning. In application in scanning, it involves scanning the application for security weaknesses in code or design that could allow breaches in the data, etc. So this type of scanning checks for the flaws such as cross-site scripting, uh, insecure software dependencies, and improper error handling, etc. Application scan can conduct uh, uh, SAST as we covered earlier, uh, and then it can dynamically test the application as well um, through different methods, ensuring that the testing across different stages of the application lifecycle. Um, using the Veracode to perform the static and dynamic analysis of the web application to identify and fix the vulnerabilities before they will reach the production servers. Now we have different scanning techniques uh, uh, in order to identify if there are any vulnerabilities in your system. We have active scanning, passive scanning, internal vulnerability scan, and external vulnerability scan. So if we talk about active scanning, it involves sending data to the system to elicit the responses that reveal details about their configuration and vulnerabilities like direct interaction with the target, traffic generation, and response analysis. Now, as it said that it actively engages with the network or the system to discover the vulnerabilities, this type of scanning sends data into the system to analyze the responses, identifying the potential security weaknesses. It also detects a wide range of issues, including misconfiguration, security vulnerabilities, and available services. However, because active scans generate traffic that can be detected, um, they can alert the attacker to the presence of the scan or cause the disruption in the network services. So one need to be very careful when conducting these kind of scans. Example could be using Nmap to send packets to the server for determining which ports are open and which services are running on those servers. Then we have passive scanning. This is comparatively a bit safe. Monitor the network traffic and analyzes it to identify the potential vulnerabilities without sending data to the target. So in the active, we are sending data to, to, the, pack, uh, to the target, whereas in passive scanning, we are just scanning for the weaknesses like network traffic monitoring, real-time data analysis, and vulnerability detection 
with the interaction. So unlike active scanning, passive scanning does not interact directly with the network component. It is monitoring. Instead, it listens to the network traffic to detect the potential vulnerabilities and the security threats without sending the data that could disrupt the normal operations or alert the defensive systems. Um, this method is less intrusive and reduces the risk of disruption, making it the ideal or continuously monitoring the network security without impacting the system performance. Example could be employing a Wireshark to analyze the traffic for anomalies, etc., misconfigurations or malicious activities which could be there on your network. Now we have internal and external vulnerabilities. So internal vulnerabilities are conducted within the organization network to identify internal threats and vulnerabilities that could be exploited once the external defenses are breached. So scans behind the firewall, detailed analysis and internal network devices, servers and applications are the components of it. So this type of scan helps the organizations understand uh, what an attacker could do once they have gained access to the internal network. It's crucial for identifying the vulnerabilities that could be exploited by insider threats or by external attackers once they breach the parameter defenses. Now, if we'll, we are running OpenVAS inside the network parameter to assess the security posture and the internal assets and uh, direct the potential vulnerabilities that cannot be visible or um, which could not be seen externally. Now we have external vulnerability scan performed the um, performed from outside the organization network to determine the visibility of its systems and vulnerabilities to external threats. Um, assessment from the external perspective simulating the view of an attacker could have. So external vulnerability scans are conducted from outside the organization network simulating the action an attacker would take to identify the weakness in uh, external facing assets like websites, email servers or firewalls etc. This scan aims to identify vulnerabilities that could be exploited from outside the network to gain unauthorized access to disrupt the services. So we can use Nessus for an external location to scan the public IP addresses of the company to identify the vulnerabilities that could be exploited from the internet. After that, we have sources of threat intelligence. Now, effective cybersecurity isn't about just defending against attacks. It also involves proactive monitoring and understanding the threat landscape. So we'll be exploring different uh, threat intelligence sources, which are structured threat information expression, trusted automation exchange and intelligence, and open source intelligence. So let's try to see it one by one. Is uh, First of all, uh, what STIX does is that it's a standard of language used to represent the structured information about the cyber attacks. Um, its purpose is to facilitate the consistent and structured exchange of information about the threat actors, methods, and the indicators of compromise among the organization and security systems. So Strix is a language and a serialization format used to exchange the cyber threat intelligence as we call it as CTI. It enables the organization to share actionable information about the cyber threats in a consistent and a machine readable format. Strix is designed to improve the speed, efficiency and accuracy of the threat intelligence by providing structured data that can be easily parsed and automated across the different systems and tools. Now using STIX organizations can enhance their understanding of attack patterns, uh, indicators of compromise and tactics, techniques and procedures used by the attackers. So example could be an organization using STIX to share the detailed threats and the malware attack uh, with the other entities via threat intelligence prof um, platforms enhancing the collaborative defense efforts, etc. Then we have trusted automated exchange and intelligence information, which we call as TAXI, a protocol that enables the automated exchange of cyber threat information across different platforms and organizations. So its purpose could provide a mechanism of secure automated sharing of uh, threat information, reducing the time between the detection and response for emerging threats. So TAXI is a protocol used to exchange the cyber threat intelligence over the HTTPS. It works in conjunction with STIX to facilitate the automated sharing of information across different platforms and organizations. Taxi defines services and uh, uh, message exchanges that enable sharing and actionable information effectively and securely. By using taxi, organizations can set up shared communication channels for threat intelligence, making it easier to receive timely and relevant information about potential threats. 
Now, that's what it's doing. For example, if there are any updates about new phishing campaigns and associated indicators from the industry-specific threat sharing community, you can get the details about it on Taxi. Now we have OSINT, which is open source intelligence. It's a threat gathering or the information gathering intelligence from the publicly available sources, including media, internet, public, government, or the data, or professional academic publications. Now utilizing openly accessible data to identify the trends, tactics, techniques, and procedures used to threat actors, often um, uh, forming the basis of the pre preliminary threat research, etc. So SINT refers to any information that can be legally gathered from free publicly available sources. In the context of cybersecurity, OSINT involves collecting data from sources such as websites, social media, and news outlets to gathering intelligence information about cyber threats. This can include details about new vulnerabilities, ongoing attacks, and emerging threat actors. OSINT is a valuable component for threat intelligence because it provides a broad view of the global threat landscape, which can help organizations anticipate and prepare for specific threats before the uh, they will impact your organization so a security analysts can use the tools like multigo to gather the information from various online forums social media and other open sources to build the profiles and potential cyber threat actors now we have different tools for vulnerability scanning and uh, each tool is different and they have their own capabilities. It really depends that which tool are you comfortable with and what sort of information are you trying to gain from these kind of systems. So they are focused, uh, they're usually focused on the, um, the tools or the scanners which are there. Um, it's a normal practice in cybersecurity for identifying and addressing the potential security weaknesses before they can be exploited. So we have OpenVAS, uh, Invisit, uh, and then the, we have uh, Nexpose and Nessus. If you look at uh, OpenVAS, it's a fully featured open source vulnerability scanner that is derived from the old version of Nessus after it became a proprietary. So OpenVAS, uh, as we know that it's an open source system, it's the uh, go-to choice for many because of its open source nature, allowing the customization and free use. OpenVAS is constantly updated with the comprehensive test and feed that covers thousands of vulnerabilities. Um, its vulnerabilities include uh, unauthenticated testing, um, uh, then different versions of uh, various high level and low level internet and industrial protocols, um, performance tuning for large scale scans and the powerful internal programming language and um, implement any type of vulnerability test, etc. So um, as it's mentioned, wide variety of scan targets and example could be used by the medium um, sized uh, tech companies to conduct regular internal scans for their network to identify and remediate the vulnerabilities. Then we have Invicti. It's a web application security scanner that automates the process of detecting and reporting security flaws in the web applications. So Invicti performs, uh, and usually it's known as or uh, famous by the name of NetSparker. Um, it's a web application security scanner known for its accuracy and scalability. It uses proof-based scanning technology to automatically verify or identify vulnerabilities with the proof of exploit. Thus reducing the number of false positives, we'll be talking about false positives later, and helping the security teams prioritizing the remediation efforts effectively. Invicti is a particularly well suited for the organization that focus on securing the web applications as part of their digital infrastructure. So accurate scanning with minimum false positive, integration with the deployment or the development workflows, and advanced scanning are the key features of it. An example could be it could be deployed at the financial institution to continuously scan the web application vulnerabilities which are integrated in your system. Then we have Nexpose. Now in Nexpose it's a vulnerability scanner from Rapid7 that supports the real-time exposure and risk management across the network endpoints, cloud and virtual environments. It helps us in live monitoring the network, risk uh, prioritizing based on the real-time data and integration with other security tools. 
uh, now as we know that it's part of rapid seven it extends the security portfolio including the um, insight vm and cloud-based vulnerability management platform offering the dynamic discovery and continuous monitoring capabilities nexpose is known for its robust reporting feature helping the organizations comply with the regulations and standards by providing clear and actionable insights its example case could be implementing a healthcare provider to assess the network devices, operating systems, and databases vulnerabilities that could impact the potential data secured. Then we have Nessus, uh, is one of the most widely and uh, widely used vulnerability scanner known as for its uh, robust detection capabilities across many platforms and environments. So its key features could be high speed, comprehensive vulnerability detection, configurable reports and dashboards and plugin architecture for custom tests. So it was developed by Tenable Network Security. Nessus is one of the most widely deployed vulnerability assessment tool across the globe. It offers comprehensive vulnerability scanning with features to identify vulnerabilities, policy violation, configurations, and malware, physical and virtual and cloud environments. Nessus is valued for its extensive plugin library that is regularly updated, making it capable of scanning for a wide range of vulnerabilities and providing a deep insights into potential exposures. Now utilizing it in a university can uh, perform external and internal scans for its vast network infrastructure, ensuring compliance with educational data, protection standards, etc. Now there are different uh, scanning parameters that we have and uh, uh, we need to understand these parameters because they are critical um, in setting security uh, parameters for vulnerability assessment. Proper configuration of these parameters is essential to effectively identify the vulnerabilities within the IT infrastructure. So we have scope of environment variable, sensitivity levels and confidential versus non-confidential scans. So if we'll define the scope of the environmental um, uh, variables, they define what to do to be scanned, including the range of IP addresses, type of devices and specific applications. Impact could be it can determine the breadth and the depth of a scan, ensuring that all relevant assets include while avoiding the unnecessary systems. So we'll have to define the scope of the vulnerability scan is uh, crucial. So it identifies the um, uh, the um, actionable computers, networks, or the systems which should be assessed. Um, this helps in focusing on the efforts of the resources on critical assets that could potentially impact the organization's security posture if compromised. Additionally, the environment variables such as different kind of hardware, software, and network configuration should be con uh, considered. Now this helped to tailor the scanning process by specific characteristics and requirements of the environment, ensuring more accurate and relevant vulnerability detection. So a corporate set of scope include all the devices which are connected to the network, but they can exclude the guest Wi-Fi devices, etc. Then we have different sensitivity levels. It dictates the aggressiveness of these scans in terms of the intrusiveness and the volume of the test performs. It could impact the likelihood of disrupting the system operations during the scan. Higher sensitivity levels may detect more vulnerabilities, but are at the risk of performing the impacts. So the sensitivity level of a scan dictates that how aggressive the scan tool probes the network or the systems. Uh, setting the light sensitivity level is vital to balance between the, um, the thoroughness of the risk disruptive in the system operations. High sensitivity levels may provide more details insight into the vulnerabilities, but could also trigger a defensive mechanism or cause the performance issues in a sensitive applications. Now, uh, we'll have to balance the things in between so that it does not affect the systems and our uh, our applications and systems should be up and running regardless of the scan etc. So a financial institution conducts a high sensitivity scan on its development environment to ensure that all potential vulnerabilities are identified before the deployment but these lower sensitivity for the production system to minimize the disruptions etc. Then we have the correlation between the uh, uh, between the cred credentialated scans and non-credentialated scans. Credentialated scans using administrator level credentials to thoroughly assess the systems, while non-credentialated scans do not um, use the administrator password and thus can um, assess external 
uh, visible issues only. So the impact could be that credential-related scans can assess the deeper system settings configurations and hidden vulnerabilities that non-credential-related scans cannot. So during the internal security assessment and IT department can use the credential-related scans to perform the deeper dive into the system health and vulnerability status, etc. Whereas the external auditors can use non-credential-related scans um, to simulate the external attackers. So if you are within your organization and you want to test, of course, you don't want to share the admin username and password with any external parties who are there to conduct any sort of test in your organization. So it's, it's always better to conduct it yourself to find the information or the things which are quite vulnerable in your organization. Now we are looking at uh, different uh, or analyzing the vulnerability scans. Um, now these are very important because it's a process of analyzing the vulnerabilities. Um, it also helps us in understanding to how to interrupt, uh, inter Spread these results specifically distinguishing uh, between the true positive, two negatives, false positive, and false negatives, um, so that we know that the kind of results that we are getting, we are getting the actual results, which are the actual penetrations that could be there or the potential weaknesses of the system. So a true positive could be cor correctly uh, identification of the vulnerability that actually exists in the system. It allows the accurate threat mitigation and reinforces the effectiveness of the scanning process. So a true positive occurs when the vulnerability scan correctly identifies a real vulnerability within the system. This is ideal outcome of a scan as it allows IT security teams to take the direct action to remediate the vulnerability before it could be exploited. True positives are indicative of the scan's effectiveness in detecting legitimate security weaknesses that need attention. Now, example could be scan identify that an SQL injection vulnerability in a web application, which is confirmed and subsequently patched. Now then we have a true negative. A true negative is correct identification um, that a vulner vulnerability does not exist. So it confirms the areas of a network system that are secure against certain kind of attacks. So a false negative occurs when the scan incorrectly or false positive. So for the true negative, a true negative result means that the scan did not identify a vulnerability because there was no vulnerability present in the system. This outcome confirms that the part of the system scanned are secure regarding the specific vulnerability that the tool was checking for. True negatives are just as important as true positives because they help confirm the areas of the network or application that are properly secured. So a scan report, no issues with the updated software application and further manual testing confirms that the application is secure. So true positive and true negative are fine. If it is telling you the right results, there's nothing like that. The problem happens when it's false positive and false negative. There you'll have to be really, really serious to check that why you are getting those results. If the results has been changed, someone has modified the policies or something. So it is really dangerous and it rings a bell if that thing is happening. So false positive is incorrect identification of vulnerability that does not actually exist. It may lead to wasted resources on unnecessary fixes and can distract for real issues. So false positive occur when the scan incorrectly identifies a normal or a normal activity to a malicious or would identify it as non-existent vulnerability in the system. While false positive might seem harmless, they can also be costly and time consuming as they lead to wasted resources in investigation and addressing a ghost vulnerability. High rates of false positive can also lead to um, wasting a lot of time and resources when you will keep on searching for information which does not exist, where the security team start ignoring alarms output, potentially missing the actual threats when they will take place. So a scan incorrectly flags a custom security script and malicious as malicious, leading to unnecessary investigation and whitelisting the procedures. Then we have a false positive. It's a failure to identify an actual vulnerability in the system. Again, it's a negative thing, poses a significant risk to the existing vulnerability, remains unaddressed and exploitable. So a false negative is perhaps the most dangerous outcome. It occurs when the scan fails to detect the actual vulnerability 
This scenario means that the vulnerability remains in the system undetected and unaddressed, posing significant security risk. False positives can lead to security breaches if overlooked vulnerabilities are exploited by the attackers. The example could be a scan fails to detect known vulnerabilities in an operating system due to outdated definitions, leaving the system at risk. Now we have different strategies of addressing the vulnerabilities. Now these uh, um, strategies could be patch and hardling the system, address difficult vulnerabilities, network segmentation analysis, or mitigating the uh, verification, etc. Um, patching and hardening, these are two different things. It involves applying the software updates that fixes vulnerabilities and adjusting the configurations to strengthen the system security. So if we'll define it separately, patching involves applying updates from the software vendors that fixes the vulnerabilities in their products. Regular patch management is critical as it closes the gaps that attacker exploits, whereas if we are talking about hardening, it refers to the process of securing a system by reducing its surface of vulnerability, which includes the removal of unnecessary services, restricting access, and applying the principle of least privilege. Together, patching and hardening from a foundational approach to protecting the systems against the known vulnerabilities, etc., is patch and hardening. Example, an IT system regularly applies security patches to their operating systems and applications and hardens the servers by disabling the unnecessary services. Address uh, difficult vulnerabilities, focusing on managing vulnerabilities that cannot be immediately remediated due to technical challenges or business constraints. So some vulnerabilities may be challenging to remediate due to their complexity or because they are embedded deeply within the critical system that cannot be easily modified or taken offline. In these cases, alternate strategies may be needed such as implementing compensation or compensatory controls or um, protective monitoring using the firewalls, et cetera, to mitigate what there is. These kind of vulnerabilities, it is important to engage with vendors for long-term fixes and to stay informed, um, stay informed about the latest deployments or the developments and the patches addressed to those issues. But sometimes it becomes a re really difficult to get rid of those systems. So that's why it's always recommended to keep up to date and keep on upgrading the versions of the system that you are using to avoid any sort of potential vulnerabilities in your systems. We will find it in the legacy system that cannot be regularly patched or protected by implementing the additional monitoring tools or by applying the network restrictions. Then we have network segmentation, the process of dividing the network into separate segments to limit the access to reduce potential impact of the breach. So the segmentation, as said, that it helps in dividing the larger network into smaller distinct subnetworks. This limits the lateral movement of the threat across the network zones, thus containing any potential uh, breaches to the isolated areas of the network. Regular analysis of the network segmentation can ensure that the segments are effectively isolating critical assets from the non-critical systems. This does not only improve the security, but also enhances the overall network performance and management. Example could be after discovering a vulnerability in an internal network, the network is segmented to isolate the sensitive data and critical infrastructure from general access. Now there is mitigation verification, which ensures to take measures to mitigate the vulnerabilities and um, uh, vulnerabilities are effective and to operate as intended. So once vulnerabilities are mitigated, it's essential to verify that measures uh, uh, that proper measures are taken to effectively implement it. This involves uh, retesting the systems or using continuous monitoring tools to ensure that the vulnerability does not reappear and that the, my, uh, the mitigation has not introduced any new vulnerabilities to the system. Verification also helps in confirming the effectiveness and response, which is, provides an assurance that the system is in the good working state, security posture meets the organization risk management criteria, and there are no issues in the system at all. So following the implementation of new firewall configuration can block a specific attack vector. Test should be conducted that uh, if there are no uh, unauthorized uh, traffic which can pass through the firewall like it happened before. Now, after that, we have risk management and compliance. So in risk management and compliance, we have different things like CVSS, CWE, and audits and assessment. So 
In CVSS, it's a free and open source standard uh, for assessing the severity of the computer system's security and vulnerability. Its main purpose is to provide a way to capture the principal characteristics of the vulnerability and uh, produce a numerical score reflecting its severity to help prioritizing the response efforts. Um, it's an open uh, industry standard for assessing the severity of the computer systems. CVSS provides a way to capture the principal, as mentioned earlier. This uh, it would show a score. This score can then be used to prioritize the response and the remediation um, effort according to the risk vulnerability which it possesses. Um, for the organization, CVSS scores are calculated based on several metrics that assess aspects of the complexity and the attacks on the impact on confidentiality, integrity, and availability. You can search on their website. They have shown a complete scale of it and different metrics that how can you find the vulnerabilities and calculate them. Example could be a network vulnerability scored 9.8 critical on the CVSS scale, prompting the immediate action to mitigate the risk before it's exploited. Then we have CWE common weakness enumeration. Now it's a continuity development or community development um, list of uh, common software security weakness that serves as the common language for describing the software vulnerabilities. Now it helps the organizations to identify and remediate the common security weaknesses in softwares before they can lead to any sort of vulnerabilities. Um, as we mentioned that CWE is a category system um, for software weakness and vulnerabilities. It is a common language, a standard for identifi uh, identifying or the identification method for the software security vulnerabilities and tool for understanding the vulnerabilities that, uh, that make up the software vulnerability or the security weakness of the system. CWE also provides a structured list of common security issues that assist in identification, uh, mitigation, and prevention of software weakness that might lead to vulnerabilities. Example could be using the code review, developers uh, you reference the CWE list to check the patterns related to improper input validation, which is known to lead the security vulnerabilities like uh, SQL injections, etc. Then we have audits and assessments. Now, audits and assessment says that is a systematic evaluation of the effectiveness of the company's information um, and the security controls to discover where the improvements are there or required. It ensures the compliance with the internal and external security policies and standards, helping to prevent the security breaches. Um, now, it's also crucial for maintaining the compliance with the security policy standards and regulations. Um, they usually involve the systematic review of the security measures and practices to ensure that all systems are aligned with the organization's security requirements with external regulatory standards. Audits can reveal gaps in the security practices that might not be apparent through the day-to-day -day operational and essential for ensuring that the organization does not drift into the non-compliance, which can have a legal and financial repercussions. Now, an annual internal audit uh, um, assesses the compliance with ISO to ensure that the information securely mayors are adequately protecting the corporate data, etc. Now there are different kind of different type of penetration tests. We have defensive tense testing, offensive testing, physical penetration testing, and integrated penetration testing. So let's try to understand what is defensive tense testing. It's a penetration testing focused on identifying and reinforcing the potential weakness within the system. Uh, its purpose is to strengthen the organization defenses by proactively discovering and mitigating the vulnerabilities before they can be exploited by the attacker. So defensive testing would focus on strengthening the organization defenses. It's typically involved testing the system ability to detect and respond to the effects uh, or to the attacks effectively. This type of testing assesses the efficiency um, of defensive mechanisms uh, such as your intrusion detection systems, firewalls, and antivirus systems to ensure that they can identify and mitigate the threats before they can cause any harm to your infrastructure. Defensive testing helps in validating the organization's incident response capabilities and ensures that the security teams are prepared to handle and respond to each breach efficiency uh, efficiently now example could be uh, a cybersecurity team conducts a routine defensive test uh, to their network to find the, or fix the vulnerabilities in their systems or firewalls then we have offensive testing 
um, as the name indicates, it's a penetration testing that simulates an external hack hacking or a cyber attack aimed at exploiting the system vulnerabilities. It helps us in understanding the potential impact of the attack from an external attack vector to test the effectiveness of the current security system. So in contrast to the defense, defensive testing, offensive testing often referred to as the red teaming or red team testing involves simulating the action of an external attacker or an internal threat. This type of testing is proactive and aggressive in aiming to find the exploit or the weaknesses in the networks, applications, and other systems. Offensive testers, red teams, attempts to breach the security controls using any means possible, mimicking the tactics, techniques, and procedures used by the real-time attackers. Um, the insights gained from the uh, offensive testing are used to close the gaps and to enhance the security measures. So ethical hackers are usually hired to perform the offensive penetration testing to simulate the attack on the company network to test its resilience. Now we have physical penetration testing. Physical penetration testing is the testing that involves attempting to exploit the physical security weakness in an organization. To um, Its purpose could be to assess the effectiveness of a physical security measure like locks, security passes, and the surveillance systems. So it involves, uh, its, its testing usually goes beyond digital barriers and focuses on the physical security controls as well. Uh, testers would implement the or try to gain unauthorized access to the sensitive areas such as the server rooms, data centers, or maybe the employee's workplace to, place to identify the vulnerabilities in the physical security setup, including surveillance, locks, access cords, and security personals. This type of testing is crucial because even the strongest cybersecurity mayor can um, um, maybe ignore a simple physical or a, a simple physical breaches that could take place in any organization. Then we have integrated uh, penetration testing, comprehensive testing that combines various type of penetration testing methods to provide a holistic security assessment to evaluate the overall security posture of the organization by testing both physical and cyber security defenses together. So integrated uh, penetration testing would combine all of these different things as the, uh, which are mentioned. This approach ensures that both the IT and physical security measures are examined in conjunction to um, assess how well they work together to protect the critical assets. Integrating the test might involve uh, coordinated attacks on technological systems and physical infrastructure to see how well different defenses layer interact and whether there are any gaps or any areas that may affect the other areas. So an annual security audit, uh, which could include the integrated penetration testing to assess all the aspects of the security and infrastructure uh, to employ the access controls, etc. Now we have reconnaissance techniques. There are different sort of reconnaissance techniques. We have footprinting, active reconnaissance, and passive reconnaissance, and they are very important because footprinting means that a process of collecting as much as information as possible with our target uh, um, and the system network um, is aware of that, purpose to gather the relevant information that could be used to find the vulnerabilities and weaknesses in the target security. So we collect the information about our target network organization or uh, without actively engaging with the system. It involves collecting data on domain names, IP address ranges, network infrastructure details, and other publicly accessible information. It can also be considered a form of passive reconnaissance, but often servers uh, usually serves as the preliminary step that informs us about um, the active systems or the things which are there in your organization. The information gathered during the footprinting helps the attacker or the security professionals to understand the scope of their target um, environment and plan their entry points and uh, subsequent active uh, activities accordingly. Examples could using like who is DNS queries and network enumeration to gather the public information. Then we have active reconnaissance involves directly interact with the target system to gather the information about its network and associated system. So it would help us in gaining a detailed data and network access um, configuration and behavior that can be used further for exploitation. 
So unlike passive reconnaissance, active reconnaissance involves directly interacting with the target system to gather the information. This could include methods like port scanning where attacker can scan the systems to identify open ports and the services running on them, sending the crafted packets uh, to systems to see how they'll respond or even attempt to gather the information about um, the system through social engineering techniques, while active reconnaissance can yield to detailed and specific information about the system configuration and vulnerabilities. It can also provide directed information about intrusion detection system, firewalls, and other vigilant network administrators, etc. that what are the systems in place. So scanning the network tools like Nmap can identify the open services associated and the vulnerabilities of the live systems. Finally, we have the uh, passive reconnaissance. Uh, passive reconnaissance, as name says, it's the collecting information without directly interacting with the target systems to avoid the detection, to acquire the necessary information without alerting on the target about the reconnaissance activities, maintaining the stealth. So um, in this one, we don't interact directly with the systems. Uh, this technique aims to avoid detection by relying on the information available through the public sources, such as the company websites, public records, social media, or passive reconnaissance also include gathering the data from third party sources, um, security blogs, um, public databases, LinkedIn, and other um, information which is related to the company and they are posting the information online. The goal is to compile a detailed picture to the target environment, security posture, and potential vulnerabilities without alerting the target system for any reconnaissance related activity. Now, monitoring the network traffic with the tools like Wireshark can capture the data passively by using the search engines to gather the data about the target. Now, there is an importance of external assessment. Now, this is really important because external assessment involves evaluation of performed by the entities outside the organization, which provide an unbiased review of the security measure. So its objective could be uh, assessment and uh, conducted by the parties who um, with no vested interest in the organization to ensuring an unbiased result and the expertise could be external um, assessors often being specialized knowledge and experience in that kind of thing. So they'll be able to give you a real time picture of the weaknesses of your system. A health care provider may contract with a cybersecurity firm to have an external assessment of their potential data handling systems like to make sure that they are in compliance with HIPAA regulations to identify any potential uh, weaknesses in the system. Then there are independent third party audits. Now these third party audits um, are independent uh, audit that involves a thorough review of the external auditor to validate the organization adherence to the security best practices and the regulatory requirements. So the verification would check for the accuracy of the organization internal security controls and practices against the established standards. So you'll have to make sure that you are complying with those standards. Certification provide the certification and the audit criteria that are met, which can enhance the credibility of the customers and the stakeholders by looking at that you are following a certain standard so they can comfortably use their credit cards on your website. Example could be a financial institution undergoes an annual audit of a third party firm that verifies the compliance with the PCI DSS standards. This is payment card industry and the audit includes the interview security system tasks and policy reviews to ensure all credit card data is handled securely. So that was our lecture on vulnerability management.